our student showcases. Sophia is going to be going first. Please uh, listen to her complete presentation and then raise your hand to ask questions at the end. And the, the screen is yours, Sophia. Okay. Okay, so my Genius Hour project was Throwing Pottery on a Wheel by Sophia Tarani, the art of throwing pots, not smashing edition. So my motivation was to learn how to throw pots on a wheel, to learn a new hobby, and to learn how to do hand building, which is another big aspect of pottery. And behind this is a picture of hand building. So wavering motivation was during quarantine when everything is shut down, I could not go to the studio and uh, throw my pots. So for a few weeks, I didn't do much because I didn't know what I could do. So getting back on track, and I was thinking what I could do. And my mom said that I could finish glazing some of my pots that have not been glazed yet. And I could do some hand building whilst until the studio opened back up. So would I pursue this project? I would, because it was really fun for me. And my mom actually got a wheel because she does pottery a lot as well. And I could do some at home um, if the studio is ever not open. And then I can also go to the studio and make some pots and do hand building and glazing. What would I do differently if I were to do this project again is if the studio was open, I would go there more often and make a few more pots and I would hope to do some more hand building at home. And maybe I would also like take a class at the pottery studio. How will I use this for the future is I would definitely go back to the studio, and make more pots. And also my mom has done pottery for a while and she got the wheel and I could do some at home with her. My original objectives were to learn how to throw a pot and have a small collection of pots that I've made that were completed. And did I accomplish them and what got in the way? I did have a few pots that were completely made, but they're waiting at the studio to be, to be fired. And I did not like completely accomplish my goal because I wanted to have a few more completed pots and maybe a few more hand built ones but I definitely did learn like the new hobby and it's really fun and what got in the way was when the studio shut down and I couldn't go and use the wheel which was kind of like my main part but I still got to do hand building a lot my triumphs were learning to throw a pot and having a small collection of pots and on the right that is a pot that I made what I learned was to wedge clay. So that's when you, at the beginning, when you like get all the air bubbles out of it and sometimes to center it when you put it on the wheel, but it's really hard for me. And pulling the walls up is when you're actually like starting to have like your shape. Hand building, which is when you like, sometimes you'll like do it by hand or you actually like use like a mold and you can put your clay over it. Glazing and carving, which is when you will carve into the clay, like this picture behind. It's carving when it's like leather hard and you can make designs in it. What's next and in the future is I will definitely keep on doing this project and maybe even next year I could do something with it with do something in Genius Hour with it, like maybe make a small business and sell some pots. Thank you for listening. Does anyone have any questions? Sophia. Reagan? Um, so can you explain what glazing is? Oh, um, so glaze is like tons of like small pieces of glass with color in them. And then it's when you like will color your pots and paint over them. And then when you fire them, it gets like a gloss over it. Cool. It's like painting, basically. Okay. Uh, Colton? Um, I have two questions. Okay. What? Um, was building the walls like the design was that really hard? Sometimes it is because you don't want it like too thin or too thick and then if you play with it too much it'll just like fall and you'll like get it stuck in your fingers and it'll just like fall apart. Mm -hmm. Um, What designs did you put in your pottery? Oh okay so one of them I can I actually show one of the pots I made. Absolutely. Okay. 
I can go grab it. Okay, so mm -hmm. this was one of the pots that I made. So this was carving. So it's when you like will carve your design in the middle or wherever. So that's one of them. And then for the rest mm -hmm. of them, I just um, did some like small glazing designs on the inside. And I also use a transfer, which is basically like a tattoo for your pot. And you can like put like little things inside and then you'll glaze over it with like a clear glaze. Yeah. How many pots did you make? So I have three that are waiting to be like fired for the final time, but then I have a couple more here that um, since it's closed at the moment, they haven't had a chance to fire them. Yeah. Uh, what would you do differently next time? Um, I probably like want to have like a few more that I, I've made like that were like completed um, instead of just having like three. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Well, very nice job, Sophia. Thank I think you. You learned a lifelong skill. <laughs> yeah. And do you think you'll practice, you know, more than just this project? Yeah, I thought it was really fun. Great. Uh, so good job. Yay. Congratulations. And now, uh, Mia and Natalie, you both are up next. Uh, do you need a few minutes? Um, um, I think we're good. OK. Natalie, you can yeah. share the screen. Yeah. Uh, give me a sec. Um, the Earth's Evolution by Maya Rizvi and Natalie Sorensen. Natalie and I chose to this project because we wanted to learn more about Earth history and human evolution as well as our place in the solar system. We also thought this would be a good topic for creating a stop motion video, which was our original plan. OK, um, how it all started. It all started 4.6 billion years ago with the sun, which established from a cloud of dust and gas called a solar nebula. Scientists think that when a nearby star exploded, the impact shook the dust and gas so it became denser. As more gas and dust came, it formed a very hot star, which is the sun. The sun was so big and heavy, it is able to pull things closer to it by its presence as a result of gravity. Soon the leftover dust and gas circulated the sun, which formed the orbit. When even more gas and dust came, it formed eight clumps of the clouds, which soon made planets. The gas constructed a sphere, the surface of what is now Earth, crusted into molten lava. Then it formed volcanoes that speed lava all over the Earth. Gravity pulled heavier materials, like metals, into the center, which formed the core. The lighter materials got pushed out to the outer edge, forming the Earth's crust. Throughout time, the Earth began trapping stray gas with gravity, which became our atmosphere. Without it, there would be no life. Then a stray planet, Thea, crashed into the Earth, which caused catastrophic damage. By the way, the dinosaurs were not alive yet. Millions of pieces of the planet cast out to space and then developed the moon. Though comets are rare today, millions of years ago we believed that icy comets collide with the Earth, causing oceans to form. Later, life began scattering all over the Earth. It took mil millions of years for our world to evolve into what is today, our home. Facts about the planets. Sun. The haze is called corona. Mercury. It's the closest planet to the sun. Venus, it is so hot it can melt lead. Earth, it is nicknamed the blue planet. Mars, across the middle is a 1,864 mile long Grand Canyon. Jupiter, it is two and a half times bigger than all other planets combined. Saturn, a day is 10 hours. Uranus, 
it takes 84 years to take a full rotation around the sun. Neptune, it takes 164.8 years to make a full rotation around the sun. Human migration. So this is when humans came to each country. Uh, Africa, 6 million years ago. Asia, 2 million to 1.8 million years ago. Europe, 1.5 million to 1 million years ago. Australia, 60,000 years ago. North America and South America, 10,000 years ago. In Antarctica, 200 years ago. Human evolution. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna pronounce this right. But bipedalism, Natalie. Bipedalism. Okay, sorry. Biped. You know, I'm just, never mind. It is the ability to walk on two legs. This trait developed over four million years ago. Humans are primates. Homo sapiens have a close relationship to each other to another primate species, the apes. Humans, the great apes of Africa, chimpanzees, and gorillas all share things in common. They have a common ancestor that lived between eight and six million years ago. Our first set tracks on the continent of Africa, where much of our evolution occurred. Things you didn't know about Earth. Earth's rotation is gradually slowing down. It actually takes 23 hours, 56 minutes, and four seconds for the Earth to rotate. It actually takes 365 days, point, uh, two, five, six, four, whatever, um, days to rotate around the sun. Each winter, about one octillion snowflakes fall from the sky. Earth is 92,956,050 miles from the sun. Genius Hour Reflection. We all, um, whoops, there uh, you go. Natalie, next page, next slide. Give me a second. Okay. okay. May, our original objectives were to make a stop motion video using the research that we discovered on Earth's evolution. Um, we... Uh, we learned a lot about how the Earth formed, the solar system, and human evolution. Because of stay-at-home orders, we couldn't meet to create the video, which was disappointing. Triumphs and setbacks. Triumphs. We got ahead. We had a structured plan. We had realistic goals. We worked together well, and we were efficient. Setbacks. It took a long time to think of a project. We didn't finish everything we wanted to. It was hard to communicate. It interfered with each other's schedules. And distance learning set us off track. And thank you for listening. Bye. All right. Any questions or comments from anyone? So I'd like to know uh, exactly what is a stop motion video um it's when you take pic you keep taking pictures of something like we were gonna do it how the earth looked like millions right. of years ago and like slowly making it to what it looks today but we couldn't do that because we didn't want one person doing all the work so and does is there that is there pictures from that entire time <laughs> um i don't know we we hadn't I mean, got there. There yet. were, but they just like they didn't really look that realistic. Oh, so people made redemption like made what they thought it would look like. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a cool idea, though. It would look neat to see that progression. Thanks. Uh, any other questions from folks or comments? So are you going, are you planning on getting together at some point to make a, a video like you want or a different type of video? I don't I mean, know. We have probably really will. Yeah. I mean, once the just like once the COVID thing settles down. Um, will it be a different theme or will it be something totally different? I don't know. Uh, I would like to do something about Earth because yeah. I learned about it and it'll 
we already have it kind of set up. So. Yeah. Cool. Uh, any que other questions or comments from anyone? Well, very nice job. Um, I learned a lot from that. I didn't realize the different dates of human migration either. That's very interesting. Did you glean anything else from that? Um, we probably did, but I kind of forgot because we did this a long time ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. We got really ahead and then we kind of, yeah. Because we thought it would take a long time to do the stop motion video and then we had to do distance learning, so. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, good job. Hey, Sorry. Melanie. Yes. Mel, are parents allowed to ask questions? Absolutely. Do you guys know why the Earth's rotation is slowing down? Um, no. Isn't it because of like air pollution? I don't. I don't know. I was just surprised, and I thought it was a great fact. Huh. You have to come. You have to tell us. You have to go back and let us know why. Okay. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Well, good job. Thank you. Congratulations on completing Thanks. your project. Okay, Sophie, you are next. Do you need some time to prep? Okay. Right. I just have to get it up. Wait, did I skip? Reagan, did I skip you? I think so. I don't know. All right, you'll go next after Sophie. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hello, my name is Sophie, and today I'm going to be telling you all about my Genius Hour project, which is drawing. I will talk about the skills I learned, what I improved on, and show some of my drawings. So my project and goals were for this year, I wanted to work on my drawing. I wanted to improve my skills and learn how to draw humans and make them look more realistic and have all my drawings look more realistic. I also wanted to find new techniques and use them in my drawings. Here's a photo of a golden retriever, retriever that I drew earlier on in the year. So for my journey, I started with drawing a lot of animals and I watched a lot of YouTube videos and looked at books. I also used a lot of references. Um, I had a lot of trouble with proportions, and I still do, but I worked on them separately, and I got better at drawing different body parts. Like, here's a photo of hooves and eyes that I drew of a horse because I was having some trouble with those. Um, I drew in the beginning a lot of dogs, cats, and horses. For my journey continued, about three months in, I started to work on drawing different parts of the human body. I started with watching tutorials on how to draw them, like arms, legs, torso, hands, and feet. Um, I, you, I learned a lot of techniques too, like this using cylinders to draw arms and legs and fingers. I found this helped a lot and then using circles to connect them with joints. I also used the flower sack technique for drawing torsos. For my motivation, I wanted to improve my skills and have my drawings look more realistic. During the middle, I lost a little bit of motivation. I didn't have inspiration on what to draw. But I got more back on track when quarantine started since I had more time and I started to draw two things each week. Um, at the top, there's a photo of a full body human that I drew after watching some tutorials. And then at the bottom, there's a photo of a cat that I drew towards the end of the year. So for my learning moments, <clears throat> I learned it takes time to improve and you won't just get better overnight. Uh, you have to continue to practice and not give up. And I can use what I learned in the future for many different things like sports and cooking that you have to continue to practice. Next time, I would like to prepare a schedule so I can set time aside on different days for when I would like to draw, and then there'll also be time for homework. And next time, I'd like to meet with a mentor more early on because I set that aside, and then once quarantine started, I hadn't met with a mentor yet, so I didn't end up getting to that this year. And then here's a photo of some eyes that I drew after watching a tutorial on YouTube. For my original goals, I wanted to be able to compare my drawings from the beginning of the year to end. This was met, and I was able to see what I improved on. It mainly was eyes and proportions. Um, I tried to draw something every week. This was mostly met because some weeks got busy, and I didn't end up getting to drawing. Uh, draw one of my drawings I did in the beginning of the year and recreate it. This is met. Um, in the top right corner, here's a photo of a horse I drew at the beginning of the year. 
the head is much smaller compared to the rest of the body and some of the muscles just don't look very realistic. And then at the bottom, there's a photo of a horse I drew at the end of the year. The head, in its proportions are better with the rest of the body and I think the shading's a little better and the muscles look better too. Uh, being busy with other things was really the only thing that got in the way. So for my triumphs, the things that I liked the most were my progression with drawing eyes, getting most of my goals accomplished, and drawing a full-body human for the first time. I think we're big steps during this project. So if I were to continue this, I don't know for certain if I would next year because I would like to try something new, but I would still like to continue to draw with summer for fun and in art class. I feel like I stayed pretty on track with this project because I wanted to see how much I would improve on in the end. And then on the side, here's some photo of some faces or heads that I drew after watching a tutorial and watching um, facial features. Thank you for listening. Any questions or comments? Uh, Reagan? Um, I really liked how your drawings were. They were really cool to look out at and they were really fun. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Uh, I'm curious, Sophie, you were going to have a mentor. Uh, what, what do you think that meant? Um, I wanted to get in contact with Judy Morgan or Jennifer, um, and I was kind of, kind of put that to the side, and I never really got to it. And then quarantine happened, and I wasn't able to get to them. So, yeah. But well, I was going to ask them for help with um, what I can use in my drawings. So, yeah. Great. Sophia? Um, what was your favorite thing to draw, like, out of all the things that you drew? Um, well, I really liked drawing probably horses the best, but that's just because I do ride horses in real life. So I had a lot of fun with drawing those and I had a book too that I used and that was very helpful. So, yeah. Any other comments or questions? I'd like to thank you for showing your progression because that's brave. Uh, to put out your start and then your finish because you could actually see your development and your growth as a as an artist and thank you for being brave yeah. doing that because I know I'd prefer to not show my <laughs> mistakes early on. <laughs> yeah thank you. Great job thank you so much. All right mm -hmm. Reagan you are up. Would you like a few minutes to get ready? Uh, I think I'm okay. Okay. Omnes is a good part and has, to die and has to survive in a world of evil. Omnes' stories are adventurous. Through the book, there's one big story that runs through it, throughout it. Although there are several stories against his bully at his school. He's a pirate and sails the sea. His mother gets sick and the only cure is a special potion his grandfather made. It is on the island of Bora Bora in the middle of the sea. He and his friends go on a thrilling adventure. Amadeus needs to make it back home in less than five days. Amadeus meets obstacle after obstacle to reach the potion and make it home safely. On a side note, a special husky joins the adventure. Hello, my name is Reagan Thomas, and this is my Genius Sarah project. For my Genius Sarah project, I wrote a book about stories my dad told me. Objectives. Um, my goals were to write 10 chapters. Um, I did that um, with a story in each. I did that. I did meet my objectives. I did hit my goal when I wrote goals when I wrote a chapter a day. I felt really good through, the, through my project, but I was really stressed through some of it. Some problems I met were timing, grammar, and um, my computer deleted some of my work. Um, I solved my problems by working harder, having my dad check my stories, and writing my story by hand. Some challenging moments were when my computer deleted my work and timing was a big issue with me because I had school and then I had after school activities. I did not have to change my goals or, objecti or objectives through this project. 
My motivation. My motivation was my dad because he's always wanted to write a book and I've always wanted to write a book. And these were some stories he told me. Um, and I was really motivated to bring my dad's stories to life and come up with some of my own. Um, my motivation went up and down. Um, an example of when my motivation went up was when I got done with chapter six um, because I was past halfway. When my mo morale was really low, it was when I'd only finished chapter three and I hadn't started chapter four. So the main character, Amadeus, would probably look like the guy in the photo, minus the face paint, the dreadlocks, and the hook. Omnis had like a little goatee, some black hair, and bright blue eyes. Alex, his brother, would look like the guy in this picture, minus the really bushy eyebrows and the bushy beard, um, with green eyes, and he would be a lot leaner and more muscular. Learning and failure moments. Some, failure, some failures were starting late through this process. Um, I did not have an outline for most of my story, and my com I'm not saving my work on my computer. Um, more research for detail and accuracy. I did do some research, but I think I could have dug a little deeper. Some learning moments where writing by hand allows me for more creativity. Details um, for the people, ship, and geography. Writing is a fun thing to do, but it's sometimes very challenging. I like using pictures on the internet to um, come up with, to inspire ideas for some of my story, for some of my characters. Some writing styles I learned through this process were architect and gardener. I prefer being an architect because they plan ahead, they structure the story and writes to fill in the blanks. A gardener is a person who goes with the flow, plans as the story develops, and does not have an original outline. Some times I had were completing chapters, looking at pictures for ideas, researching facts, and finding ways to um, to in to introduce characters. I got really better at that last one. Continue my continuing my story would probably be a really big maybe because of timing. Um, I would really love to continue my story, but with after school activities and school, it may get in the way. Um, some researching I did was Blackbeard's death. Um, his ship when he was captured and the capture's crew after a battle. Things I learned about myself and the project were I like writing and using my imagination. Um, I like to procrastinate when I don't really feel interested in something that much. Um, and I learned that a better schedule can solve procrastination a lot quicker. I prefer freehanding it over typing it um, because I don't really trust my computer that much. Um, I, prefer, I prefer being an architect over a gardener because I prefer to have a plan um, more than going with a flow. Um, what I learned about my project is grammar matters a lot. Um, if you type one wrong word, it can mean a totally different thing and mess up the whole book. Um, skills and improvisation. Some skills I learned through this was grammar and writing. Um, I got really good at those skills and then improving on I need to improve on formatting my stories differently and the timing with my chapters I struggled with timing a lot thank you for listening questions any questions or comments from anyone so Reagan how many stories were from your dad and how many were that you created um, I created about five of them out of ten of them. Wow, so half. Yeah. Were they all similar themed, all about shipwrecks and sailing and? Um, no, there were some with his this bully at his school, who um tries to like outsmart Amadeus, and so um, yeah, and Amadeus usually wins against him. And then here's the finished copy of my book that I just did. And then it's like 30 pages. Anyway, so yeah, that's what I did. That's a lot of pages. Do you plan on uh, pu like publishing any of those stories? Um, I may think about it for later Genius Hour projects. But um, yeah, I may do it next year, but I don't know. Wow. That's cool. That's a, that's a big achievement. Congratulations. 
Thank Anyone you. else have any comments or questions? All right, thank you, Reagan. Thank All you. Right. Jace, you are now up. Do you need a few minutes to get ready? Uh, give me like one minute. Okay. I got it. Share my screen. Hi, my name is Jason, and this is my Westcott project. For my uh, first, I will start off with explaining what Westcott project is. Westcott was a concept proposal for where California Adventure stands today in California. Uh, it is very similar to Disney World in Orlando, Florida. Uh, future worlds focus on technology and human growth, and then World Showcase country pavilions to showcase people, culture, and architecture. Uh, my country of interest was Portugal. The population of Portugal is approximately 10.28 million people. The major religion in Portugal is Christianity, and the most common language in Portugal is Portuguese. Uh, this is my pavilion design. I didn't actually end up using this in the end because it didn't really work for the uh, the track that I wanted to use. And um, the story I wanted to tell was Portugal is a cool place to visit, and it had been a place I wanted to visit for many years, and I still haven't gone yet, though. Uh, architecture in Portugal. As you can see by the picture, uh, the houses are very like close together, and they're very like old buildings so they're not as modern as many other architecture in many other places so it's older um foliage in portugal the types of plants that they have in portugal are lilies roses and cork oak trees and also sunflowers oh i spelled that wrong uh, and many others uh, this is my color palette. These are the colors that I used in my scale model. And the top one is like, it's supposed to be like sand, but it doesn't really look like that. And then the other, uh, the orange and the green and the uh, pink I used for the houses. And then gray I also used for the houses. And then the black I used for the roads. And then blue for the ocean and background. Uh, this is my food menu for Westcott Project, like, so if they were ever to go to my, if this was ever, like, a thing in real life, uh, like, it's, like, an amusement park, and this would be, like, the menu for, like, the restaurant there, and some foods that they have in Portugal are fried sardines, cooked squid, and cream-filled cinnamon balls, and the drinks I wanted to use were fountain drinks, lemonade, and horchata. Uh, some sounds that you could hear in uh, Portugal, like, if you went to my amusement park, it would be, like, the sounds from the town, because, like, I decided to make my track, like, above the town, to where you would look down, so you could, like, and then you would hear the town below. And then also from the ocean waves. Uh, entrance and exit. The way that people would get into this world would be there would be booths on the outside where you would get a ticket and then you there would be a parking lot on the inside and then once you're done with the amusement park you it would, it would, it's basically like a loop all the way back around and then you exit basically in the same parking lot except that there's like another little entrance thing and then uh, I'm gonna explain what dark rides are dark ride is a indoor amusement Ride on which guests experience a story through various scenes within a show building. And mine wasn't really a dark ride. It was more outside, like a, a sightseeing experience. It wasn't like, it wasn't really telling a story. And my creative process was brainstorming. I wanted to do something that had to do with soccer, but I realized that 
wasn't really going to work with this project. So I decided to go with a place that I loved. Um, why I chose this attraction? Um, the reason I chose this attraction was uh, Portugal. Like to so Portugal, it, like it has a very like beautiful ocean, and the town is very like unique and very cool. And that's why I'll, I've always wanted to go there, and that's why I chose this project. And there wasn't a better way to than to make the ride over the ocean and the town so you could see both. Uh, ride system. I chose to do my ride like this because I thought it was unique and it's really cool how it's above the whole town and part of the ocean. And this supports the story of my project because it's all based on the town in Portugal and the ocean. Uh, this is my scale model. Uh, it's kind of messy because my cat sat on it. So uh, that's why there's a bunch of tape everywhere. And then these, I put lights through the houses over here. Um, things I learned, most important thing I learned was how to like, like, like how to build like an attraction and how I can also like expand this next year if I wanted to keep doing this. Some problems I ran into is my cat sat on my scale model, so it kind of broke and then I had to fix it. And then, yeah. How I overcame that was I put a lot of tape on the track so it could actually stand up. Um, things... Oh, what? Uh, that's... Uh, thank you. Any, any questions? Uh, anyone have any questions? Hey, Jace, uh, I thought this was a really interesting project, and I was curious what horchata was, or horchata, that drink you mentioned. Oh, it's it's one of my favorite uh, drinks. It doesn't really relate to Portugal, though. It's, it's basically like rice milk, and then it has cinnamon and sugar in it, and then they put ice in it. It's actually really good. It's It's more of like a Mexican drink that you find at like Mexican restaurants. Oh, okay, thank you. Good work. Thank you. So, Chase, you're, do you want to just explain to folks what your Westcott project is compared to the Genius Hour? Um, uh, wait, what do you mean? Just explain what, 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 that, what that assignment was, Westcott. Uh, Westcott was basically just building your own theme park okay. and like we'll building like a section of it and like later on you can like choose to build more sections of it and so Jing Shower is basically just like coming up with a goal that you want to meet at the end. This is basically just building a theme park. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Are you happy with your presentation besides your cat, you know, your what you made besides the cat sitting on it? Was it what you envisioned? Uh, not really. It was kind of bad. I It was kind of hard to, like, build the track above the town because it's kind of hard to, like, stand it up and with my cat sitting on it. So. <laughs> I think it's a cool idea, a very cool perspective. It'd be fun to experience a place like that. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? All right. Thank you, Jace. Congratulations. Great job completing this. Ian, you are up next. Do you need a few minutes to get set up? Uh, not really. I'm just on my sister's computer. Okay. Uh, or actually, I need to share the screen. And okay. Hi, my name is Ian Rizvi, and this is the wonderful world of gardening. At the beginning of Genius Hour, my original project was to build a computer. I researched what goes into a computer and how a computer works. But part of my project was going into the community and doing odd jobs to get money to buy parts for the computer. 
Then the coronavirus hit the U.S. and Washington put the stay-at-home order, and I could not go out and get money to buy parts. I was left at a decision to change projects or stay with my original project, and I ended up changing projects. My new project was called Taking on the Wonderful World of Gardening. In this project, I wanted to learn all about gardening, I wanted to grow cucumbers, and I wanted to learn how to pickle them. First thing that I learned was that you have to prep the beds. First, we took out weeds, then we amended the soil using compost and manure, and then we conducted a spring cleanup that included irrigation repair. Next, we started fixing up the garden. First thing that we did was paint the fence and then we weeded all around the garden. After we started planting, and when we planted, we had to determine seed spacing for the plants. And since I was growing cucumbers, the seed spacing was three inches apart. They were supposed to take seven to 14 days to germinate but they took a little bit longer because it wasn't the right temperature for them to grow. We also had starters, which are plants that have already grown, and we planted them in the soil. Next, we had to keep up with weed management. We did this by hand, and we did this every week for every bed. Then we did pickling. We did dill pickles, and the recipe was dill, red pepper flakes, warm water, and apple cider vinegar. Um, also, I don't think this is the right... I'm going to share my other screen, if that's okay, because this isn't the right PowerPoint. Let me share my... Um, okay. Um, is it showing my screen? Maya? I don't know. Oh, is it? I'm not. This is, it didn't, when I sent it to my sister's computer, uh, yeah, okay. So, um, oh, oh my gosh. gosh. You're okay, take a minute. It's fine. Um, take it, you have time, take your time. Okay, so, use the dill pickle recipe, and since the cucumbers were not, going to be ready by the end of genius hour we just got cucumbers from the store i learned a lot from this project including flexibility gardening skills patience like when i had to wait for my seeds to my my seeds to germinate, and I also had to learn to work through frustration. If I were to do this project again, I would do a lot of the same things, because I think this project was very successful, but I would also start an early season crop, because I would have more of an end result. And I would also start seeds indoors for the same reason. I would also experiment with more recipes other than dill because I think that there's other good recipes. And I would also experiment with more vegetables. For my future plans, I want to keep tending to my plants, make lots of pickles, give to friends or sell, 
and I want to replant next year. Nice job. Any questions or comments from folks? Did you plant other plants besides cucumbers? Yeah. Um, I planted in my I had one bed for myself and in that bed there was also Brussels sprouts and carrots. But um, my main plant was cucumbers. Okay. Looks like a beautiful garden. Thank you. Face. Uh, how far did you get along on your computer building? Uh, I had researched everything and I knew what I needed to like purchase, but I ended up not being able to get money for it because of the coronavirus and distance learning. So next year for Genius Hour, do you think you'll do the computer or will you stick with the gardening? Um, I might just change it up and do something completely different. Okay. But yeah, I think it was a su successful project. Great. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Any other questions or comments for Ian on his gardening? Well, when your cucumbers finally uh, do mature and grow, how many cucumber plants do you have? Um, we have in total right now like six, but there's still like eight that haven't germinated yet. Okay. So you, you could have a lot of cucumbers to pickle again. Yeah, we're going to have quite a few. Good. Fun. So you can experiment this summer with your different recipes. Yeah. Okay, great. Nicely done. Great job. Thank, Thank you, you for presenting. Colton, you're up next. Would you, would you like a few yeah. minutes? Um, well, first I'm going to start by finishing a bracelet. A bracelet. And then there's the bracelet. So now I'm going to share my PowerPoint. My genius time was making bracelets. Bracelet techniques I learned. For beginners, jellyfish, wrap, and vibrate. For intermediates, Chinese ladder, candy stripe, visco, chevron, zigzag, and diagonal bracelet. For advanced, double chain and diamond. My motivations. I really liked bracelets and I wanted to be more creative in like the artsy way. Wanted to learn about marketing. Learning moments. That people have an image in their head and you must create it. You must appeal to them like colors and techniques. My motivation goes up and down when that happens. I think and just say that I just have to finish it. Setbacks. Some of my setbacks was I couldn't see people so I couldn't sell them as fast as I would have liked. Distance learning. It had to be all on text messages so it was a bit harder harder to understand what they needed and quarantine I could not meet with my mentor. Outcome for current genius time. I sold 26 bracelets and made $26. Learned about marketing. I have learned 11 techniques of making bracelets. I learned more techniques because I wanted to sell more. I will not continue this project. Outcome for future genius time, to plan things out more and have a better schedule and ask people outside of the people that I don't know as much. 
what I learned about myself. Um, I wanted to try a different kind of creativeness, like the artsy way and the crafts. I'm very picky about what the bracelet looks like and that I make things a lot more complicated than it is. How I learned about marketing and techniques. Bracelet videos, I use Chinese ladder. Jellyfish, I learned that from Jennifer. Double chain, five braid, zigzag, diagonal bracelet, candy strip, chevron, visco, diamond, and wrap were all YouTube videos. Marketing, you have to learn more to sell more. Pull on their heartstrings. You sort of uh, want to make them buy them with emotions. Know what appeals to your audience. Examples. Determine their favorite colors. Use their favorite team colors. Use colors that remind them of something important. Use different textures. Use different combinations of colors. Objectives. To, to make and sell 20 bracelets to learn about marketing and to be more creative. Questions, thank you for listening. Uh, why aren't you going to continue this project, Colton? Because um, I just felt really stressed about it. And I sort of just want to explore more with crafts. Okay. Uh, Reagan? Um, who is your mentor, Colton? Um, Selena Weber. But um, due to after school activities, I didn't really meet with her. I sort of just texted her. Cool. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Colton, what do you consider this a success when your goal was only to sell 20 bracelets and you ended up selling 26? Yeah, I thought it was a success. It turned out to be a really big hit in sixth grade. I was really shocked by that, but it happened. So. Did you sell more than one bracelet to one person or did you sell them to 26 different people? Um, it depended what they, it depends on what they wanted. Um, like some people asked for five and then some asked for two or one or three. Okay. Reagan? I forgot to lower my hand. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, anyone else have a question or comment? What is your favorite technique? I really like the Chinese ladder. It just looks so sophisticated and nice when you do it really well. Great. So you don't want to continue this. Do you have a different idea for Genius Hour or next year or no? Uh, I sort of just think about it through the summer and through fall. Okay. That's fair. And how many bracelets did you make for yourself? I haven't got to that part yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the fall, I look forward to seeing you with bunch of, tons of bracelets on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, any other comments or questions for Colton? Well, congratulations on your genius hour. Nice job, Colton. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations to all of you. You did great for all your projects. And uh, thank you for sharing with us. And I just wish you all a wonderful summer. I hope you uh, enjoy uh, completing this and uh, looking forward to what's next in your horizons. Uh, be safe out there, take care and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.